everybody hope you're doing well welcome back to my channel today we are doing something that is very important to me i got a request from my niece and as many nieces who are three years old she is one that yes loves frozen and she wears her elsa dress everywhere all the time all day long she loves being a princess that's basically just, you know, the life of a three-year-old girl. Uh, but today I wanted to do a look for her because she wanted and requested a blue look. And um, I have quite a lot of blue eyeshadow, actually. And I think I want to kind of build... I know Elsa has purple eyeshadow. So, you know, if I was actually doing the character, I would have done purple shadow. But because Chloe my niece, requested blue, we are going with blue. Um, and Elsa's dress doesn't go super dark into like a navy kind of blue. So I'm going to stick more with kind of blues in this realm. This is my new Warrior 2 um, or Warrior 3. I'm going to use the Warrior 2 here uh, to help kind of build up just some base colors with these bottom shades here. And then I'll probably go in Obviously, I'm using quite a lot of my Juvia's Place here. Um, I might use some of these more silvery tones. I'm not 100% sure on how blue or kind of purpley it's going to be, but I would love, I'm kind of envisioning maybe a little bit of pink purple in the transition area going into the blue, which will be kind of the main showcase on the eye. And then in my Mer Mercury Retrograde palette, from Huda Beauty, there is this stunning glitter called Nebula. And I would love to put some glitter on my eyes because it has been a minute um, since I've really... <sighs> Ooh, this one shade Mercury is looking real nasty with some fallout in there, but whatever, I digress. I would love to use some glitter on my lids today. So today is just going to be a fun play kind of day. Um, I have nothing on my face currently, so let's change that, shall we? I'm going to go in with this Milani Prime Light, and I've been using this a couple times now. Sorry again, Miko is just crying like nobody's business. Um, but I've been using this Prime Light maybe three or four times now, and I really like it. Um, you can see definitely, uh, I mean, I don't know if you'll actually be able to see it with the camera from there. But if you get this product, you'll see there's definitely some almost like gold reflect in it, which is really pretty. So I'm just going to get this primer on and I'll bring it back. So the primer is on my face. Now it's time to prime my lids. I am using my Milani eyeshadow primer. Definitely with any sort of bright shadow looks, you want to make sure that you're priming your lids. That will really help to not only make the shadow last longer, but those vibrant bright blue shades, we want them to show up as that vi like vibrant bright blue color. So adding on some primer will definitely help in that process. All right, so I've got the primer, uh, eyeshadow primer on my top and bottom lid area because I'll definitely be doing shadow underneath as well. And what I want to do to kind of start it off, I think, is go into maybe like a lighter pinkish kind of shade because I think I'm going to start with a pink and go into this pink shade in the Warrior 3 palette then move into this beautiful purple shade, and then perhaps into this blue. Um, if that's not all working for me, then maybe I'll just do the pink, but I definitely want to kind of build a pinkish uh, transition area. So I'm actually first going to go into the Tropic palette that I got. Oof, sorry, I feel like there might be a hair. Ha, ha, ha. There is. Get her away. All right, I'm actually going to go into this slightly kind of pink toned nude color here called nudist from the tropic palette that i got for my birthday i'm just going to tap into that with a fluffy blending brush i'm just going to go right into this transition area which is not quite to the brow and it's not quite into my crease right in between there and i'm going to use this color on both eyes and go back and forth all right so we've gone in and we've added in that nudist color, which actually shows up a lot more than I thought it would be, which is pretty. It's nice. I'm now actually going to go into the Warrior 2 
from Juvia's Place and take this Zazz color at the bottom, this bright kind of white. And I'm just going to hit it slightly because I know these shadows are pigmented. I'm going to go right above that pink area that I just put and just add in that kind of white cast just to slightly brighten up the brow bone and blend it into that brow bone area. Probably end up going in there with maybe like a light kind of shimmer shade, but I just kind of want to highlight it for right now with that white color. Now that I've done that, I would like to build into this pink shade. And this pink shade is called Fanti. Fanti? Don't you want a Fanta? Um, I'm not sure how pigmented it is. Like I said, Juvia's Place usually is always pretty kicking, so I want to take this very lightly. Um, I'm still going to use this fluffy brush. Actually, I'm going to change to one that's not quite as fluffy. This is, I think, a MAC 217. Um, it's a little worn off. Yes, it is a 217, which is just slightly a bit more tapered and a little smaller, which will just give me a little bit more control when going in with the pigment, grabbing onto the pigment, and then placing it where I want to place it on my eye. Something so fluffy is really going to disperse it kind of everywhere. The more defined you get of a brush, the more compact your color is going to remain. All right, so we're gonna go into this pink shade. We're gonna build up. I'm gonna go probably a little bit lower than where I was with that other lighter color, but I wanna bring in just a little bit more of the pink, then we'll go into maybe a little bit of the purple, and then we'll get into that blue. Let me go in the pink first. All right, I got that pink on there. I'm now gonna go back into the Natasha Denona palette, go back into that lighter pink and help diffuse out this color going up. So back into this nudist shade, go right over what I just laid down. And this bright kind of pink, I think will be really nice into that blue tone, especially when we get the purple going in there a little bit, just so that it's not just so much of blue. I kind of wanted it to almost feel like, you know, the Northern Lights or something. Maybe not Northern Lights because those are more green, but just something where it's kind of like this cool, um, beautiful, deep, I don't know, pretty colors put together. That's what I wanted to do. All right, so now we are going to jump into this beautiful, stunning looking shade. Candace is her name, and this purple looks really quite rich. I have some other purple matte shades, but nothing quite like this. So I'm excited to play and see how she plays with uh, kind of the rest of my shades. I think I want to go into something that's even a little bit more tight and controlled. So this is Visanti um, Contour Eyeshadow 4 Brush. I honestly don't remember where I got this. It must have been in like an Ipsy or a Birchbox or something like that. And I really like this for kind of building out the crease area, but I think this will also be really nice in this transition area where I wanna build on some of this purple shade, but I don't wanna build so, so much um, and have kind of nowhere to go with it. So I'm gonna start with just a little bit on this brush here, tap it off. I can already see how much pigment is on there and bring in just some of that purple. I'm just taking this brush and some really light kind of feathery motions doing a little bit of back and forth a little bit of circular motions really trying to lightly blend in that purple color and this honestly isn't really even into my crease it's pretty much my crease but this is uh, more so a little bit higher up than that still I'm gonna go back in to my MAC 217, grab that Fanti pink color and go over that purple on that edge just to blend her out. Really get that nice and seamless. And the blend of these, Juvia's Place, they always do it well, I gotta say. This looks so pretty together. Now I think I'm even gonna go in again, back into T Natasha Denona. And this is a lot of what this blending is, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on who you are, how much time you want to spend doing this. Going back and forth in between shades and really blending things out is what makes this look nice or what makes things look nice. It's taking the time 
to really blend things to make it look seamless. So I really enjoy that blend. Now I'm very intrigued to see how this blue is gonna show up if I pop it into the crease. I don't know if it will kind of turn murky or not. So I wanna kind of take it a little bit lightly. If it starts turning a little bit not to where I want it, I'm gonna go into a bit of a darker blue, which basically looks kind of black. I guess this one is a bit more of a navy and this one's more of like a violet based blue. Um, so I might go in between either of those two shades to kind of build up, but I want to try going into this Gola color and see what happens, uh, to build up that deep depth within the crease. I'm going to go in with the brush, the brush that I often do into my crease, my Morphe E22. I just love how it kind of fits within my crease. The taper of it is really nice. Um, it's just a, a good brush for this area. So I'm going to go into this Gola color, this brighter kind of blue, and we're going to see how it looks right within this crease area. Now you can really see how it's changed the purple quite a bit, um, which is kind of what I thought would happen. It's these layers of colors that we're putting on top of each other. It's looking a little bit more blue, which I thought was hoping would happen because I want this to be more of a blue look and the purple is slightly turning a bit more blue. We might go back in and add a little bit of purple just because I think this looks so pretty. It's kind of like cotton candy-esque vibes. Um, but don't worry, we'll really build up the blue definitely on the lid and we'll probably go with something even a little darker to really uh, bring out the depth either in the corner or both inside and outside. I'm not sure if we're going to do kind of more of a halo thing or not. It all depends uh, on how it ends up looking, but I actually like where this is going. And also I am reminded at this stage of something my very good best friend in the world tells me is that I look crazy when I don't have the rest of my face done and I have these crazy outlandish, you know, colors on my face. But I promise you it will look cool when you get the rest of it done, your face Everything will look more even, a little bit more polished. But yeah, right now, you know, I'm looking like a toucan. You know, toucans are beautiful. So is it really that bad of a thing? I would like to go in ever so lightly and tap in a little bit of this boy. I mean, I don't even think if I, I could never probably pronounce this correct. Yejidi, Yejidi, Yejidi? We're gonna go with Yejidi is the name of this shade. I don't really know but it's this dark navy color. I am going to go into this though with the lightest amount of pressure. I can't even tell you. I'm going to also go into this very tiny, tiny little brush and then just hit it right into this corner. Just, just a hair, just a smidge. I can't even emphasize how much I'm saying just a little amount because if you go in so heavy with those colors, all your beautiful blending and all this work we just spent won't even matter. I'm gonna go back into the Gola color, which is the lighter blue, and go over everything that I just did to really kind of blend it all out. I don't wanna lose all of that darkness, but I do wanna blend it in real nice with the other blue and help it stand out as being a true blue. Now I think I'm gonna go back in with my little itty bitty brush. Um, not the one that I used in the crease, the one that I used for the purple. I'm gonna go back in with this and help kind of lightly intensify the purple and then we'll go back into the pink as well because I don't want that to be completely lost. I do like having that kind of as this edge area. So ever so slightly kind of grazing in that purpley color. I'm loving what is happening here into the transition and the crease, all of that, but all of this work we want to make sure that we maintain kind of everything that we've built here. So I'm going to kind of do a cut crease-esque thing, um, but I'm actually going to use a pencil. Um, and this is a white pencil from NYX. This is Milk. So I don't have like a super white concealer. And I also don't think I have, well, I could maybe try with this brush. But basically, with like a cut crease, you would, or half cut crease, you would basically kind of put concealer in this area and really kind of sharp and make it uh, very almost angular in the sense of you have this concealer going over part of 
your shadow look, but I'm gonna kind of make it so that it's not maybe as harsh of a line with using this stick. But I wanna use the stick to also make sure that the shadows that I'm putting on top of this look like the color they are. Uh, although I'm really happy with how these shades are translating with just the primer. Now I guess that also brings me to what shade am I actually going to put on the lid? Because I know I would love to put this glitter on the lid. Oh yeah. Um, but I definitely want to put blue down first. And I think the blue within my Masquerade Mini if you are looking to try any little bit of color in your life, this is such a great way to do it. This is a beautiful palette. I think it runs at 20 bucks. These are honestly some of the best, like foily, metallic-y shades you will ever use. They are so, so pretty, so stunning. Um, but I think going into this Zola color at, on the top is really what this this needs. So I'll probably hit that, maybe go into a little bit of Dahlia on the outer crease, and then we'll go in with the glitter. But in order for me to kind of make that look its best, I'm going to go into uh, this lovely milk crayon. I'm gonna try it just on my finger, kind of warm up the product. And then I'm going to tap into that area um, that first kind of front part of my eye. And then, well, should I try with the brush first? It's a thin synthetic brush, so it might work out well. So let me try putting the product onto this brush. And then let me see if I can tap it on kind of where I want it to be on my lid. Oh yeah, it works quite well actually. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna just leave it at this for the moment. Because this is a little bit tacky, the, the stick itself, I'm just gonna go right into the Zola color onto my finger and I'm going to pop it right over uh, the crayon that we just put on. Now to clean it up slightly, I wanna go into my brush, a tiny brush, and build up that blue color from the Warrior 3 again, just kind of around that edge, right where I've placed that shimmer color. Awesome. Now let's get that darker blue kind of out. This is Dahlia. And I'm not going to do too much of this. This is just to kind of make it, because I, I love the tone of the color right now. So this is just to slightly deepen it up. This is one of my favorite purples, by the way, within the Masquerade Mini. This purple, she is everything. I mean, she is everything. This obviously is not going to be a look for everybody. This look I am doing for fun, it is a lot. Because on top of this, I want glitter. Like, I totally want glitter. Oh no! And then I just look down and I see this beautiful Congo shade. There's too many beautiful blues in my life. Like, how do I pick any? But this is actually quite similar to Zola. A little darker, a little bit more um, kind of like a, a deep blue. Oh, look at how stunning they are. All right, maybe I'll add a little bit of this in the middle and this will help blend everything together. So let's do that. A little bit right into the middle. Wow, it really... Um, looks so metallic and wet, which I adore. I feel like now I should put on the rest of my face and I can bring you back before I put on blush or highlight or any of that. And then we will finish out the bottom portion of the eye. Hi everybody, welcome back. All right, so I put on my foundation. I got some bronzer on, I did my brows. Now, I would like to finish out kind of the bottom part of the eye, maybe finish out anything on top, and then we can go into blush um, and highlight and all of that goodness. So, I am toying with what I want to put into my tight line, my water line for my lower lash, and I want to try this um, electric color from Urban Decay and see if it goes in and is that bright of a blue. And it's not really transferring too much. And I don't want to 
you know, wait around all day to get that going. So now I'm gonna go into, this is a NYX um, purple. I think it's called violet. Yeah, purple violet. Let's see if this transfers in a little bit better. But I don't really know if that has the punch I'm looking for. So I'm gonna find my black crayon and we're gonna go in, we're gonna do a nice black line. Found it. I don't really like using this in the waterline, but I have nothing else at the moment. So this is Black Bean from NYX. The only reason I don't really like this in the tight line is that it just doesn't stay there. It's not supposed to be used. Well, I mean, it's an eyeshadow crayon. You can use it however you want to use it, but I don't think it has like a longevity um, in that bottom area. So to build out that bottom, I'm gonna go in with the blue. I'm gonna do a little, I think I'll do all of that light blue first, kind of across the whole bottom. And then we will blend out using the purple and the pink. But first let's go into that light blue on a pencil brush and just smudge out that bottom line. Now that I have that blue all on that lower lash line, I'm gonna go into the deeper blue that I used and just go on the outer part just a little bit to add a little bit more depth in that corner area, bring things more kind of to a point. Now I want to use my tinier blending brush that I use with the purple and go underneath in that purple area. I'm going to keep it kind of pointed up when I blend out so that I don't have fallout all over the bottom of my cheeks, but you know, it might happen. We'll have to see. Now that we got that purple, I wanna go into the pink. You guessed it. Go kind of basically right over where the purple was because I don't wanna bring it down too much further than where it is already. Then lastly, but not least, into that lightest pink shade. I think I might wanna add a little bit of the kind of shiny colors. Um, under my lower lash line to help kind of make those pop. And I also think I am going to still add some glitter as well to the lid space. So I'm gonna go in with the Congo color from the Masquerade 3, oh no, the Warrior 3, excuse me, on a pencil brush and see how this goes right here. I'm gonna try with my finger, really hard to get the shiny shadows underneath this area here. And then we'll have to add some of that lightest shade from the Masquerade Mini. I'll kind of line the tear duct too a little bit with this, but we'll go in with something lighter than this. And I think because Black Bean kind of got smudged out when I was um, blending everything. I want to add that back into the tight line area as well. Nice. Now the outside blending here gets a little bit wonky compared to this side. So I'm just going to blend that and shape this out a little bit better. I think it's time to add a little bit of that glitter, but I just want to add a little bit maybe over this blue, but not too much because I don't want all that blue to be lost because that blue is just so pretty. Um, but I am going to go in just a hair with a glitter primer. Now, you always have to be careful when you're kind of packing different things and shades on top. We already have, what, three different products at least uh, over this area. So I want to be really light kind of when I'm applying this glitter primer. And it's probably going to take off a little bit of this shade when I apply it which I can see on my finger, but I wanna have a little bit of tackiness if I can to have the glitter adhere to something. So then after that, I'm going to go in, excuse me, as I find my mirror, go into this nebula color and tap just a little bit of this kind of purpley glitter. Super fun, pretty and definitely that added some glitter. So now it's what do we do with this inner corner here? I kind of think I wanna keep it light. I wonder if I should use this cosmic color. That might be pretty, like a pretty pink. And I've used this in the inner corner before. This is just a stunning shade. Now, 
I think I just need a little bit of highlight on my upper brow. So I'm going to go in with one of my favorite highlights, and I hope they sell this individually, this Venus highlight from my Naked Basic palette. And just hit that right over the top. Also, what are we gonna do with the lips? Let's add some blush because boy, do I look pale as ever. Um, into blush though, what should we do with our blush? Um, I don't know, that doesn't seem quite right. We'll probably have to go, I don't honestly have too, too many blushes. I probably should get a couple more just so I have a better range of shades. I'm trying to look for one in particular that I use often. I do like this dandelion brush, I just blush. I don't know if it'll be enough, but I think we can try it first. So let's try it. Obviously I love it, I have hit pan. Definitely helps brighten up the face, get some blush on, you actually look alive. Now for highlight, I actually think I'm going to use the shadow within the Mercury Retrograde that we used within the inner tier uh, duct area. Just because I love the continuity of kind of the same shade. I'm going to take that, put that right on the upper part of my cheek. And yep, I basically have landed in Andromeda and I'm all about it. I love like galactic looking kind of things. Oh, so pretty. I also think this look could use some black liner. So I think what I'm going to do now that I've done the blush and the highlight, I'll bring it back for lips, but I'm gonna do a nice black line, probably not much of a wing, but a good black line, curl my lashes, add some mascara, and I'll bring you back for the lip and we'll finish this out. Hey everybody, we are almost done. Now I just need to add a lip and I gotta tell you, putting on some black liner and some mascara, oh, does this look epic. I am about it. So we wanna kind of bring out, I think the pinky, ishness in the eye. So I'm kind of just looking through my lip area. One moment. Let me try a little bit of this Stay On Balm. Pretty color. Now let me add some gloss on top because I love a gloss, obviously. And I think I even want more gloss on top of this because I'm nuts and I love gloss. If I can find it, where is that really pretty? Ooh, this one's got like glitter in. We could try a little of this. <laughs> Extra. That's a lot of gloss, but what do I really care? It looks so pretty. So please don't mind the sweatiness of the hair or anything like that. But I actually love how this turned out. I obviously, you know, my day to day, I do not do this. I have not done a look like this in a while. And I mean months, but I definitely want to do more looks like this. I think it is so much fun. I have all these beautiful shades and I want to play with them. I want to be able to do create, you know, create fun things like this. And I must give a big shout out to my lovely little niece, Chloe, for giving me the inspiration to do something fun like this. I know people probably wouldn't think Elsa when they see this. I'm good with that. But I definitely played with blue. I played with some purple. I played with pink. It is a beautiful fantasy. I love what's happening on my eyes. And yeah, it's just a lot of fun. And I hope you just have a good time playing with makeup. It is just makeup after all. Have fun with it. So Thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Hopefully you do something every day that you love to do. And that's it. All right. Bye guys.